Hi, it's Des here. I'm in Denver in Colorado. I'm at Convol Go 2019. I have the pleasure of being joined on camera by Damien Andre, who's the Senior Director of Technical Enablement at Convol. Great to see you. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. Absolutely. No problem at all. And great to see a fellow Aussie. Um, Aussie's always good. Good times. <laughs> the accents stand out amongst this crowd. Just uh, a little for bit. For reasons, but anyway. <laughs> um, now, we're, I would like to chat about the topic of real life ransomware. I mean, this is mm. something you deal with on a day to day basis yourself individually and your team around you, and Commvault as an organization, and your clients and customers uh, and the ecosystem around that. Um, maybe firstly, if we could just talk about ransomware, 30,000 foot view. Um, what are the usual scenarios that you see that are coming at you? When we think about ransomware, we sort of think about someone sending an email and a phishing attack and someone mm. clicks on an attachment. But we've also heard scenarios where uh, yesterday I chatted to a gentleman who talked about a, uh, a nation state sending human beings to follow staff around and they went to essentially outside somebody's house, managed to get onto their <laughs> Wi-Fi and inject something that went back in behind the firewall with a VPN. So, you know, we've got, I would like to sort of talk about initially what you're seeing is what we call a normal ransomware attack, and then we'll sort of pivot onto the outliers that you're seeing that are unexpected ones. What, what does a normal ransomware attack even mean? Absolutely, the, the phishing stuff is huge right now, and that's what yep. we're seeing. So um, ransomware is getting in through endpoints, yep. um, so, and that's the, the, the first level that we're seeing uh, at the moment. Um, I, it's, it's really hard to say what's normal these days, because it right. just seems like the attacks, like you, like you just mentioned, are getting a lot more sophisticated. Um, so yeah, I spoke to the same gentleman you did, and it's an amazing story of the lens that folks are going to now to actually infiltrate yep. uh, people's networks and encrypt their data. Uh, but usually, yeah, it starts off at the endpoint. Uh, we're seeing, you know, if security best practices are not being followed, that very quickly spreads to, you know, your core infrastructure, and that's yeah. when the, the real dramas begin. Um, so we're seeing the full gamut of that, hey, just an isolated event of, a, of an endpoint being um, yeah. uh, infiltrated uh, to, I've lost my entire Active Directory infrastructure, please help. Um, um, yeah, the, the full gamut. Uh, and that really started and started accelerating within the last three years. Right. Uh, and we've just seen a, a huge, a huge uptick uh, yeah, in yeah. the amount of uh, customers being affected. I mean, I think everybody's seen the you know, stories in the media in general of, of that classic mm. scenario you mentioned, which is like, you know, I get an email, it looks and feels like my bank or my employer or whoever, and I click on it. You know, the classic sort of letter from the CEO, read this document, right? And then boom, you've got me. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing now a transition from you've got my laptop and my endpoint device to now you've got the server it's attached to for various services like email or file storage to then that device dials home and gets some other help. And even to the point where some of the code now is morphing itself automatically to say, well, I, I'm on this machine, I've pulled the network, I can see this router, this switch, this firewall, modify myself to hide from them and then hit the entire infrastructure, right? Absolutely. So we've seen those. But uh, I imagine they're frightening to come across at the best of times. Yeah. But are there, you know, are, We've heard some of those examples, like the one I spoke about just a moment ago with the gentleman yesterday, where someone actually went and infiltrated a, a home access point and so forth. But in between that, where you know, not everyone's being attacked by whatever. I mean, there's so much opportunity to make money out of this. It, it must be the case there are more and more bad actors coming to this with lower and lower uh, a barrier to entry, if you like. Mm. They, you, know, you can buy these tools online through different websites and whatnot in the dark web, you, you, you can effectively download source code in GitHub for some of these examples. Like Absolutely, the Meraki, right. Uh, I think for example, <clears throat> um, I remember last year there was a scenario where the Meraki code was made available somewhere in a dark website, someone put it in GitHub. Well, every man their dog downloaded and was like, now they can run their own IoT bot, right? Make your own, modify it. You know, yeah. If you know your target and who you're trying to aim for, then yeah, it becomes very easy to get something to start with and just make yeah. a few modifications and all of a sudden that's not being detected by your security product. So, yeah, absolutely. I imagine, I mean, there's an increasingly diverse uh, uh, surface as far as those attack vectors go, but the actual journey that you take customers through must be a fairly consistent process of what have you seen, what are you experiencing, what do you know about it, what don't you know, and then let's look at the data you've got, and, and not just the live data now, but what happened in the last few backups. When did that situation change? When did the file start looking different? And then what can people learn from it? What does that journey look like from the point of help to, okay, we're back to okay? Absolutely. Well, well Convault recently has added a whole bunch of functionality to try help with that journey. So it's not just, uh, you know, all of a sudden you're being called at the point where your core infrastructure is being yeah. uh, uh, damaged. Uh, but at the point of, hey, we detected that uh, something was really strange on that endpoint device where, hey, because files were encrypted, the the you know dedupe ratio gets messed up, so it yep. triggers an alert that something's not looking normal here, or um, yeah, a bunch of changed files that we don't usually see on a Sunday night, you know, happen on a user's laptop, things like that. Um, so we're really trying to help accelerate, um, I guess, identifying. Uh, when attacks can happen before they start spreading. Yeah. I mean, with the, with the latest sophistications in ransomware, that's increasingly difficult to do. Yeah. But providing, you know, since Convault lives on all your infrastructure, there's an opportunity for us to get more involved in that journey yeah. uh, and, and do some things on our end to make that uh, more visibly aware uh, of when these things happen. 
I guess that's why companies are looking to come vault now for that level of intimate relationship, not just within trusting you with protecting the data and the traditional backup or archive and, and management of the data and moving backwards towards on-premises, off-premises now in the cloud and so forth. And certainly more exciting with uh, opportunities to leverage the like the capabilities of the likes of Heavy, for example, mm -hmm. and the newly announced uh, Metallic with self-service right. and SaaS. Um, but uh, anyway, how do you deal with scenarios where um, you know, I might create a file and just encrypt it because they want to email it to a third party. It could be an encrypted zip file for a folder or uh, an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document. Um, and I might email it to 10 people and then say that. And also you got, you know, not just one file, but maybe dozens or hundreds versus the, the other end where it's a ransom where it's not. I mean, you must be developing some pretty uh, sophisticated machine learning and artificial intelligence capabilities to detect those patterns based on historical knowledge and predictive expectations of this is the level of change we're seeing. What does that look like? Absolutely. So the machine learning, it does have a period of monitoring where we're yeah. looking at what is normal for an active machine. So we can't, you know, just turn it on and, and it starts yeah. alerting and <laughs> things start looking weird. Um, it actually, you know, takes its time to learn really the inside out of a, of a system um, and then it will make smart decisions based on that data. So as yeah. soon as an anomaly is detected, it becomes very apparent to us that it doesn't fall within the realm of what is normal for this particular piece of infrastructure or, or end user laptop or wherever the device may be. Um, so it becomes very easy for us to start, you know, asking some questions to start actually yeah. taking some actions and preventing, uh, you know, disabling uh, removal of backups at that point because you right. might need them, things like that. So um, all that's built into the technology and there's a, there is a lot of sophistication uh, behind the scenes and we try not to expose that to our end users. Yeah. It should just work, right? Yeah, and yeah. it should just be available. Um, so yeah, there's, there's plenty of that in the software now. It's like that one line from Arthur C. Clarke that a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, and I imagine the scenario that we're, you know, as we know with Commvault, you know, we've, we've gone away from the grandfather, father, son sort of backup regime where we're just backing everything up and just keeping copies of them. Um, and, you know, you're moving things down to block level and, and, and across multiple environments, mm. on-premises, in the third-party uh, data centers or host environments and clouds. Is it the case that from a, from a recovery point um, time-wise now, you can reduce the, the outage in the very same way that you can with the disaster recovery, and that if some piece of the business or some system or some business logic goes down, you don't just restore the entire business, you just pull back the bit that's broken. I imagine that's the case now with ransomware, where once upon a time people might just go and put everything back and think, oh, let's go back to Tuesday and see if we're okay. No, let's go back to Saturday and see if it's okay. Is it the case now that you're using a lot of the intelligence just to fix the bits that are broken, while the rest of the business continue to function? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a whole bunch of, uh, you know, a whole bunch bunch of functionality that allows us to do that. Granularity has always been important to us. Like, yeah. you know, if you if you have a, a puncture on your car, you don't want to buy a new car, you want to change the tire. And you want to get four wheels, right? I, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we take the same approach and methodology with Commvault. Um, so, and one of the things Commvault gives you is options. You know, a lot of yeah. these point products don't really give you a slew of options that allows you to recover quicker, uh, where with Commvault, we give you a whole bunch of options to choose the best recovery mode based yeah. on what the scenario is. And with ransomware, we're finding that, you know, every scenario is completely different. Indeed. There is no generic approach to recovery from ransomware. It really depends. Uh, you know, we've seen scenarios, and I know we'll probably get to this in a, in, in a minute. We've seen scenarios where your entire Active Directory infrastructure goes down, and the devices that were storing your backup data, you no longer have security on those devices. Yeah, so it's yeah. not going to let you in if you don't have any Active Directory. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of scenarios. So you have to treat each of them differently, and Commvault gives you a unique set of technologies and functions and capabilities that allows you to deal with those unique scenarios. Right. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. I'm interested to get into those scenarios just briefly if you can. I mean, one of the things I'd love to, to get from you is some insight from your experience so far, given you are literally at the bleeding edge of it in a positive way and working with so many customers around the world who are either experiencing those for some unfortunate reason or preparing for them to be mm -hmm. ahead of it and ensure they don't experience them. Um, based on the scenarios you've seen, what are some of the key uh, pieces of advice and takeaways you could offer that people should either be already doing or considering? And potentially just, you know, from the water cooler conversations to in their daily stand-up scrums to standing agenda items on their, their boardroom meetings uh, every month that they should be thinking about of where their human resource and investment financially should be put to protect themselves and working with the likes of yourselves at Convol and saying, well, we haven't necessarily been hit yet, but we, we don't want to be on the front page. What can we do to prepare in advance to, to avoid that ever happening? And even if it did happen, what's the best response? What are some of the things that people should be talking about and what are some of the actions they should be putting in place now if they haven't already? Absolutely, so you said it, preparedness. Preparedness right. is key. You need to keep an updated DR, you know, disaster recovery plan, know where you're going to be able to access your data, have everything documented. Um, that's one of the key pieces. You know, a lot of customers may set up their backup solution three years ago yep. and forget how they configured the bits and pieces that it requires them right. to put it all back together. Uh, Commvault's very forgiving in that aspect, um, but your solution may not be. Um, so being prepared is 
number one. You know, from a boardroom perspective, you need to invest in technologies that allow you to recover from this stuff. You can't just think about physical uh, disasters anymore. You know, and that's what a lot of DR solutions are built around and, and, and data centers. Now we're seeing ransomware. You know, when you get hit, it's spanning data centers. It's corrupting yeah, yeah, everything that yeah. you have. Your secondary copies. It's going. It's making efforts to remove your backups to make sure that you know you have to pay that ransom. Um, so investing in technologies that allow you to combat this. You know, it's a new problem, it's a unique problem, uh, I think is super important. Um, and obviously, yeah, picking the right technology that that's, yep. you know, enables you to mitigate the risk. It's the risk of sounding uh, sick of antic, but uh, one of the things I, I'd like to put out to viewers who are tuning in is that um, it seems to me that it, it actually makes sense for the board to support a program of reaching out to your Commvault partners, mm. and integrators and bars, et cetera, and resellers to actually get that conversation going now so you can start putting in some strategies, a, a bit of a roadmap and a plan and a timeline, and even play out those scenarios. Engage yourselves at Commvault and the team around you in that ecosystem to add value. Say, so, well, let's just do maybe even a, a dry run. Let's pretend what would happen. You know, how do we contact our stuff and let them know there's an outage? Potentially even say, stay at home today because there's no point coming to office because things down. Right. Through to how do we recover the data? Um, have you got some uh, experience that you can share around some of those where you've actually done that and, and companies can sort of consider what you've learned from that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't have to go it alone. You don't have to be an expert in ransomware recovery. We are we are the experts. We see it all yep, the time. Yep. Uh, so learn from us. Learn from, you know, unfortunately, learn some some of the customers that have had some heartache through ransomware from and us. Avoid the same pitfalls. And avoid the same uh, pitfalls. So one of the things that we did um, at Commvault Day Zero is we have some training and we have some customer sessions and they come in and they share a lot of their stories. And uh, that was a, sh a great opportunity for people to learn uh, is from some of the experience that others have had. Right. And we have similar workshops happening all the time. Um, if, you, if you're not sure, I mean, you can even call into support and say, hey, I, I really need some information about how can I block ransomware from attacking you know, the data that I've protected. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't go it alone. Leverage partners, leverage Commvault, uh, and uh, you know, as much as possible and, and use our experience to help you navigate this challenge. Indeed, and that also allows companies to stick to their core business. Right? If I'm a bank or an airport or a logistics or a transport or mm. health-related business, I'm not always a great IT shop. I'm definitely not the best at backups, which is why I have Commvault in the first place. And I am definitely not wanting to be a specialist in ransomware. Right. I never want to hear about it, but I still have to plan for it. And I guess the hashtag more than ready for this whole event is kind of really the takeaway for me that you've got to be more than ready for not just the business challenges of you know uptake and new sales and growth of business or onboarding stuff, but the worst possible scenario. Uh, it's kind of like, I think it's like healthy eating and working out. You know, you may never run a marathon, but it doesn't hurt to go and run occasionally. Right. Um, and healthy eating, you know, you don't know whether generic can last forever, but it doesn't hurt, right? Absolutely. And I think these scenarios are just like that. It's, you know, it's part of your sort of healthy lifestyle of the company. Let's talk about the event uh, uh, finally uh, before mm. we wrap up. So one of the things I loved about this event um, was that you had this. You mentioned day zero. That's one of my favorite phrases. Before day one and two, this is day two today. Um, you had this event where you had partners, um, mm -hmm. you had training, you had certification, and then there was a networking drinks night. And we were talking about it off camera that uh, a number of scenarios where competitors effectively out, outside this organization using your technology, using your platform, you in your ecosystem. I saw a couple where they're like you know, a couple of guys chatting away, and they looked at each other's badge and went, "Oh, you're a competitor." But then they realized the birds are a feather. That I, I think in many ways that that's part of that culture and behavior that comes out of Commvault, and that is that you'd rather talk about the challenges you're working on collaboratively as opposed to worrying about whether you're a competitor or not, because that's a fact of life. But you're still using the same platform, same technologies, and in many cases saving the same business problems, hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that that happened a lot, and uh, we find that a lot with our very large uh, service managed service provider community. And they'll, you know, you know, they start talking initially, and they right. realize they're competitors. But once they start describing the challenges, they, you know, understand that they're all in it together, yep. and they can all learn from each other's experience. And when it comes to things like ransomware and risk mitigation and, and DR, um, you know, they can share those technical stories and actually, you know, figure out ways to uh, to learn from each other, which has been really exciting. And let yep. let the business compete with the business, but let the technology, you know, uh, uh, win at the end of the day. If there's a couple of key takeaways from the event that you'd like uh, viewers to uh, to action, I guess, um, in many ways, and that is if, uh, you know, I mean, there are thousands and thousands of people here in, in, mm. in the event at uh, Denver and Colorado at Commvault Go 2019, but um, if people are viewing and not able to get here for some reason, or whatever the case might be, um, what are some of the key takeaways that they should be considering? What, what can they, uh, I guess, glean from this event and what you've been doing yourself and your team around you at Commvault Go at the event uh, to, to take back to their organization say, well, we should be talking about that now, should be actually now, we should reach out to a Commvault partner or whomever. 
I'd love to get some thoughts around what you're seeing on the floor here and that they could then go in action from what we've learned in this last couple of days. Absolutely. So um, we've released a, a bunch of technology over the last year, um, especially since the last Commvault Go. And it's, it's always a great time around the Commvault Go area to reevaluate how Commvaults, uh, yeah. I guess, progressed over the last year. Uh, you know, since we are releasing quarterly updates, it's very easy to miss something here and there. Right. So now's a great opportunity to engage with Commvault, to keep the conversations going, to learn about new things, to discuss the challenges that you're having. Because if we didn't have a solution for it you know, a year ago, yeah. the chances are we definitely do today. Right, right. Um, so I think um, just constant awareness, constant communication with Commvault is key. Uh, it's all about being ready, and the best way to get ready is to speak with us. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for catching up with me. It's been great to see you, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you in the next year or Absolutely. on the podcast prior to that. And uh, congratulations on a fantastic show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.